This is Walt with Multiversity Comics, here with Fred Von Lentz at New York Comic Con. So first of all, got the finale of Comic Book Comics is yes. on the way. And when, was, when did you say that was probably going to hit stands again? Well, we sent it to the printer this morning, so that usually takes about two, three weeks to, to, to do turnaround. So pretty soon. Okay. It's only, it's only three months late, but it's totally worth the wait. And for anybody that might have missed the uh, first few issues, do you have any estimate on when we might expect the trade? Uh, yes, uh, in the spring. And uh, I'm excited to announce, well, I guess I can't announce it yet, but we will not be publishing it. The previous issues of Combo Comics Action Philosophers were all self-published by me and Ryan from uh, Evil Twin Comics, but we just signed a deal to have a, a big, real, normal publisher publish the trade collection of Combo Comics, which is the history uh, of comics as a comic. All right, and as you said, uh, you also did Action Philosophers, and you know, you've been doing these nonfiction comics. Well, um, and do you have any other plans for any nonfiction comics coming on the way? Uh, we do. I've got a couple things going on. We've got uh, 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 Action Presidents is a is a is a project we're going to be starting soon, which is which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, I am currently working with my uh, extremely talented. Uh, neighbor over there, Sarah Lexic, on a project called Renaissance that's about Da Vinci and Michelangelo and Machiavelli and the Borgias and that whole bunch uh, murdering and raping and, and oil painting their way through through uh, uh, Italy. So uh, it should be uh, that should be coming out online at least fairly soon. And um, I mean, I know that. Back a couple semesters ago, I would use action philosophers for studying. What do you think the future is for comics in education? Is there one? Or? Oh, I think it's huge. I think that in many ways, and this is something we talk about in the uh, uh, in the last issue of Comic Comics, I think that people want to know what the entry point to comics is in terms of what, what's the spinner rack. I mean, a lot of people call Torrance the spinner rack, and a lot of people say, you know, how are people going to discover comics? It would not surprise me if, not, not unlike regular literature, the first place people are going to learn about comics will be when they're kids and, and in the classroom because so many teachers are embracing the graphic novel medium not just as adaptations but as works of literature unto themselves. I just think that's going to, uh, I think you're going to see that more and more. All right, well, moving over to your work with Marvel, um, on a, starting on a sad note is, you know, the cancellation of Herc. Um, and how did you feel when, you know, you had the opportunity to go into this new volume and now it just has to come to an end. Did you, were you able to tie or will you be able to tie all the plot lines that you hope for? Maybe not in a way that you would like, but in a way that is satisfactory. Uh, yeah, David Hahn is, is wrapping up the final issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a fairly big, big issue. It's about 28 pages long. Uh, it involves a lot of storylines involving Rhea, the waitress of the bar where Herc works. Uh, Zeus shows up. Electra shows up. There's the hand. There's there's another m very important mythological uh, figure from another culture. I don't want to give any spoilers, but he shows up. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a bummer, but um, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, I I'm very happy with the way it came out, and I would not change a thing other than sales. But uh, uh, you know, sometimes things just don't work commercially, and, and that's that's uh, that's just a fact of life. And if you experiment and try new things, some not everything's going to hit, you know. But I'd rather you know, fail than not try, I guess. And uh, between volumes, there's obviously the more uh, physical level of, you know, the power level involved, you know, this, as opposed to, you know, big sprawling god level epics and, you know, this more street level but with a touch of fantasy book. Besides that, what would you say is like the sort of tonal difference between the two series, if there is one? You know, I mean, we sort of started out kind of trying to turn Herc into sort of Conan meets the Punisher. Uh, and it was fun, and it was a, it was a much grittier tone. But unfortunately, Greg and I can't help ourselves, and the humor kind of crept back in. So even though you don't know about Amadeus Cho, who was one of the major characters of the previous series, Incredible Hercules, you still have a lot of humor going on in it. And uh, uh, and the Spider Island arc was a lot of fun, and this last arc with Elektra. I know we don't really think of Elektra as a comedy character, but wait till you see the, see this issue. All right. Well, in stark contrast, you. It's a slightly old news at this point, but still the announcement of Alpha Flight becoming an ongoing. And then, you know, that is a series that has struggled to have that hold before in the past. And so, how was that, just getting to hear 
Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting, and I think that, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to sort of doing the original eight issues as an eight-issue arc, and uh, we'll see what happens after that, you know? I mean, it's, uh, it's very cool. And um, it's obvious you've spent some time looking into Canadian culture and politics, and, uh, you know, just how do you go about with this kind of research? Uh, Greg, you know, because Greg and, uh, and I are co-writing it together, we sort of shouldered the burden. He, he follows a lot of, like, Canadian uh, news sites and newspapers on Twitter, and... Uh, I, we, 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 we did our, our absolute best to sort of not embarrass ourselves and, and, and it's always something you want to be respectful when you are a foreigner writing about another culture, you do want to be respectful of that. And fortunately, uh, who's been a huge help is Dale Eaglesham and his uh, wife have uh, very, uh, they're both Canadian and uh, born and bred and so they, they look over the scripts and they, they, they're sure to let us know when something is off or not quite uh, Canuckian enough, if that's a word, but it is now, I just pointed. Sounds like a good enough word to me. Yeah. But um, so you've been dealing mainly with the core cast of what people consider Alpha Flight, not you know what uh, Burn kind of started. And in that is Puck. Did you plan along with Jason Aaron to bring because he had Puck in the Wolverine arc, or was it just like a matter of coincidence? It's like we're looking for Puck. Oh. Well, Puck's available now. Yeah, I, I, Jason has, had wrapped up his, what he wanted to do with Hul, uh, Paul, Puck. Called him Hulk for some reason. Uh, he wrapped up what he wanted to do with Puck before our series started. So that, that kind of worked out. And we at one point, he might have been in another series. But uh, we got hold of him. At first, we didn't think we were going to get him. But when we did, it was very exciting. Uh, were there any characters that you want to use but were unable to use? Yes. They wouldn't yet let us use Madison Jeffries for some reason. They wanted to keep him in. That was the one guy the X-Men office wouldn't let us have. Uh, I, I had some fun plans for Madison Jeffries, which involved him going crazy and living in a junkyard. So I would have radically changed him from what the, uh, what the current X-Men version was. So it's probably for the best for them that they didn't, they didn't let me get my hands on him. All right, and now as we are coming to the close of somewhat of the first arc, what can we expect as we leave Fear Itself and go into the post, what would have been miniseries? Uh, well, there's definitely a lot. You'll see, There's a the way the, the mini ends, there's a lot of unanswered questions and it'll be fun unpacking those in the future. And uh, I think our final note is um, point one. You have a story coming up in that. Obviously a lot of that is under wraps and probably some will be revealed over this weekend. What can you tell us? Is this someone that we are going to remember? or? Uh, well, I certainly hope you remember it. Uh, these are brand new characters that have never been seen before who will be introduced in point one. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, it's fun to work for Salvador La Roca again, Invincible, Invincible Iron Man fame. I always enjoy working with him. But I can't really say anything more than that. This is something you've never seen before uh, in the Marvel Universe. Characters. All right, well, I'm, we look forward to it. I'm sure our listeners do too. And thank you very much for this opportunity. No problem. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks, man.